Welcome back to Ankara. It has been a couple. It's been like a week or you know, a week. It's been a, it's been a little while since I've played, but I've been editing footage and I've been thinking. So, remember when I talked to the bird and he was like, "I guess you're possibly the vessel, bro." So, does that mean that like he like that Charles implanted his wife's soul and essence into my body so technically I'm his wife but then I'm also probably some other person who was a good surrogate maybe so we have a mission because I get distracted very easily when I'm playing the game one we have to go and use the effigy of that statue I'm pretty sure if we go up in the attic and we put that down, it'll move the other one and then we'll be able to get out onto the left side of the other house where the piano room is and the office is. Secondly, I don't think I opened that padlock of the box down in the basement cellar place, so we need to open that. I'm pretty sure that had, was a padlock lock and I have the key for that. Um, third, I think that's it. I don't know if I read this, so I'm gonna look at this really quick. And who has not heard of the ghost ship as an entity? Its ragged sails billowing in the night as the waves burble against the hull. Of course, maritime tragedies and the oral tradition of seafarer storytelling has undoubtedly aided in the dissemi dissemination of these legends, but who can, who can admit to an actual sighting of such a phenomenon? Only the very few, and often the most unreliable of men. Still, as we've seen, the British shorelines are filled with stories of ghosts and specters, phantoms and creatures from the deep. Yet, it is the ghost ship that to me represents the most elegiac tendency in the human heart. The ghost ship represents an understanding not only of loss and the, inevitability, and the inevitability of death, but it also represents a yearning to understand the lost, the forsaken, the forgotten. It has often been stated that in centuries gone by, a, mirror, a ship mirrored the class system found in the British Isles. There were noblemen and there were peasants, food and famine, riches and pestilence, all side by side. The ghost ship then does not represent the story of a, sin, of a singular tragedy. An injustice needing addressing, like so many other haunting tales. No, the ghost ship appears as a cultural and folkloric tradition, a tender expression for mourning for societies and cultures now long gone, now long gone by. A whole world now dead and forgotten drifting away on the sea. In the ghost ship truly we see ourselves, for one day our society will be forgotten too. Our names, our loved ones, all will be as tobacco-tinged breath in the air, as another seafarer in times to come encants our twisting tragic tales. Like the ghost ship itself, will disappear in the same instant, in a cold whip of the wind. I see. Anyway, I was also thinking that I perhaps, with the locket, I need to go down into the cellar place and explore down there. Um, I just changed this because I think I need the power to be on up in the other room, on the other house, and that cable was green, I'm assuming, and it's like the attic. So it should still be A1. I don't know. We'll see. You're calling again? I don't need a hint. I know what to do. I am going up to the attic. I will be there. The camera doesn't just see truth, it banishes lies. It banishes lies. Hmm. Again, okay, the locket. The locket, I feel like it tells you how far you've gone down in that long, unending hallway. I don't know if you could tell down in the cellar, but when you walk down there, it it walks for a very long time. I probably cut a lot of it out. But when you go back, it comes back really fast. So it's like a little, like, lost in time type of thing. So I think maybe the locket will tell you you're actually making progress over there. We'll try that, I guess. I'm also thinking about just jumping down that hole. Because, like, I'll think, I think it'll, like, get me past somewhere fast.
Okay. So that's like... This thing is not in cubicles. Okay, like... One, two, three, four... One, two, three, four, five, six... Down one. One, two, three, four, five, six, down one. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I'm goaded. Okay, but what about this? Oh! Spider! go is he gonna kill me I'm really regretting opening this uh, thing now I'm like <laughs> door knob can I have this I can't move. He won't look around. Oh my god. I am stuck walking to the corner. Why this thing is taunting me? I'm completely mo this is th it, This is moving by itself. There's something with this spider here, but I'm not sure what. Is this log? I don't have a key for this. That's the most blatant sign I've seen of office ever. Yeah. Do you see me? I see her. If you... If for a little bit... The period of mourning following Beatrice Nershaw's passing was understandably a dark and testing time for the art of the photography itself. Their relationship having lasted 30 years ended in a tragedy on the very anniversary of the couple's meeting in the very same location that they first met. Following their final celebratory meal, and despite the foul weather and brewing storm outside, the couple stayed in the Crooked House Inn at, the Charles, at Charles' behest. It was only hours later that the decision proved to be a fateful one upon leaving. A loose roof tile that it had been chattering in the wind came free from, free from its fixture. Ultimately, the disastrous injury to Beatrice's skull cast aside any thought of an open casket funeral. Charles shut himself away, and some claimed he abandoned his art. Some claimed he abandoned his art altogether for a short period. Whether this is strictly true is unknown, but it remains unlikely in this time frame. Charles took on his first assistant and apprentice, Eleanor Maskell. Although an apt and reliable assistant, Eleanor's work will later break from Charles' more abstract style to focus on the darker world of scene of crime photography. What influence Charles' somber demeanor had on this decision is a much discussed topic among art critics. It was around this time that Charles attempted writing fiction based on his younger life as a photographer. His writing was reportedly met with poor reception and nothing he wrote was ever published. There were, of course, rumors of a growing interest in the occult, rumors which have dogged him as which have dodged him, dogged him his whole life. So that
owner has been visiting. She's concerned. Says she knows how to get how I get this time of year. I hadn't realized it. But I haven't seen her for weeks. Haven't even left the house. I asked Eleanor to play one of our one of your songs. I nearly couldn't do it. The guilt was too much, but she obliged happily, mistaking my anguish for embarrassment. She said she was out of practice. Her notes were halting. Cautious. It was still beautiful because it was your song. It was you. I wish you two had met. Damn. Okay, I'm going to sit here and watch for this to open, and then I'm going to grab it. And then I'll finish reading that. Yo, that bird got some nerve to tell me, watch out for the leaf, the loose root tiles. Knowing damn well I'm the vessel of this man's wife, who got her head crunched in by a brick. That's crazy to me. It opened up like the, just the tiniest bit. I've seen that thing full on open, bro. Um, my mood darkens. For tonight, I know what I must do. I, tonight, I seek out... Oh, tonight, I seek our oblation. I see the same girl every night. She walks alone past our house, then down the road to that... Circles... To the road that circles the lake. Give me strength, my love. He... Bro... Is this, um, about Cara Talius? Taliet? Hmm. How can the dead live after passing? Parts of the... Parts of this can live... Parts of them can live through the Ankara. A, a long piece of the dead bind it to the vessel so what did he bind to me cuz i'm the vessel if i if it gets bound to me i'm screwed it is done god forgive me he killed that he hurt that woman So, it, the lights need to be off. The lights need to be off for it to work. The Ankara is bound to the vessel. I believe... I believe... Is the Ankara the thing in the um, center of the house? Um... Because what girl, was Carrie's Talit the one that died? Because they were, he was looking for his, um, offering. Or like. So that thud was not my imagination. So perhaps I should have moved the the statue like I had intended. I was like, huh, maybe I should shut this door back. Whatever. It is what it is. Was that there before? Beatrice, what have I done? I thought nothing had happened for a terrible minute. I thought it had all been for nothing. Homie, there is something moving in this water. I'm not crazy. Okay, second task done. I don't remember how many other tasks I had. I forgot. Okay, we did the statue, we did this. Damn. Please. 
please, I need to get out of this water. And this is not the time to be lagging, like... Alright, we're safe now, so let's read the note. <laughs> I am not crazy. You guys were hearing the water moving down there, right? Um... Beatrice, what have I done? I thought nothing bad had happened. For a terrible minute, I thought it had all been for nothing. Then she opened her eyes, and I realized the horrific irony. It did work, and it wasn't Eleanor. Not anymore. But neither was it you. The thing that peered at me from within my apprentice's skull was too foul, too profane. To be you, some creature dreads with, dredged the accursed void, where it is so cold and so dark, and my stomach writhed in terror. And I felt, and I fled, stumbling in the water and clambering up the stairs. Oh, dude, you just missed like a five-minute pause. So I, is that this the the noise I'm hearing down in the in the in the basement? The water moving? Like there is something down there. There, there's Eleanor's. It's the vessel combination thing he did, and it didn't work out. It's unclean. Oh, my God. Um, anyway, he says, I locked it down there in the basement, but it's not trapped. I know it's not. It will come for me with its obsidian eyes and its gasping screech. I must be ready. I will end this for us, Beatrice. I'll set things right. I promise. I can hear it. It's coming. So he's in the hospital now because the thing that he created was not Eleanor. It was okay, but how do you get Ellen? How was it Eleanor? What was it Eleanor's body? Oh, so maybe he he bound it to Eleanor and. Okay, so he tried to use Eleanor as a vessel, but it backfired, and it didn't work, and therefore, the thing that came back was not Eleanor. No! It's blocking my way. I simply should have shut the door. I should have shut the door. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I took a picture of it. It says. I'm tweaking or if that room is tweaking <laughs> okay so it said believe it or not this house is twisted my own very words that I said when I first walked in and saw this mess up as house it said this house is twisted it was made by the builder and it doesn't make sense um, I'm not sure I can't say for sure that it I can't say for sure that it doesn't make sense. It makes sense in its own right. Um, so now the left side of the house is like cut off to me. Because I, I, I honestly believe it's because I let, I didn't move the effigy back out of the way and like, I don't know, maybe that spider got up to something and lock, knock that, um, maybe the spider's in my attic now. I'm looking for the doorknob. Mm. 
So now this should be the bathroom. Mm. The crate rests precariously on the edge of the broken floorboards. Well, we're gonna push it off. I bet this is gonna fall down that big ass hole. I bet you it fell down that big ass hole. There's something on the floor back here. Oh, it's the other half! Great! Okay, so Charles Nur Shaw was- I'm reading down below right here because we kind of read that already. Charles Nur Shaw was bludgeoned in his own home with, as our sources claim, one of his own cameras. Eleanor Maskell is believed to be the one who called the emergency services to the scene. Upon arrival, Charles was quoted saying it's not Eleanor before slipping into a state of unconsciousness. This combined with a witness statement from Charles' neighbor who claimed to have seen a man in a green coat fleeing the scene was led to the police removing Miss Eleanor Maskell from the list of possible suspects. The second assault, this is the second assault in the area in under a week following that attack of Karis Taliad on Duak Lake at the night of the 14th, September 1985. Tragically, Karis Taliad passed away suddenly without warning while at home last night. The cause of her death is still unknown. So that was the who we used for the ablation. That was probably the lady walking around at night by herself. So I don't think this was our Ellen, like Eleanor as she were was before whatever it was possessed her or um whatever was bound to her took over. Who's this? Who is Charles's neighbor? Like a house across the street or their house right next door to us. Because <laughs> we can't believe anything anyone in that house says. Man in a green coat fleeing the scene. Hmm. I feel like that was him then. You know? His other self maybe? Because like how I'm seeing double? I don't know. I don't know what's going on yet. The pieces are here. The pieces are here. They are. This is true. But. So. I mean. Let's just hop. Okay. So I'm definitely in the basement. Crate fell down here. I literally have nothing to say about either of these things. Take the right at the end. Take the right at an end. Take the right at an end. Take the right at an end. The right at an end. Homeboy, this just changed. That's the Ankara with the bound and Yo, he scared the shit out of me. It's 
take the right at an end. Hello? Well, there's that black hole over there. Oh, is this the book he's been reading? Oh, it's a photograph album. Take the album. Word of the Dead. Eleanor Maskell. So this is The Apprentice's work. The doorway, the stairs, the chair, the sheet, the bath, the leg. Also, oh, I, I have to fill this book up, huh? The doorway, the stairs, the chair, the sheet, the bath, the leg. Well, we can go into the bathroom in the other house. I'm not entirely sure what doorway they're looking for. <laughs> I found a coin. Wait, this is a different room. I hate, like this, guys, I'm going to say it right now. I hate this idea. So if I can just get out in the underground, I think this will take me down to the basement. It did. Jesus Christ, stop. 
I can't watch this anymore. I know it's against the rules, but I can't watch you waste your life like this. There's nothing else down here. Turn back. What's that door, though? No, you're capping! There's a door right here! I can see it! You lying son of a gun! There's a door! The diary of... There's no J, so I can't... It's not Jane. Charles Nershaw. I'm think I can't remember. I've read those books about him, but I can't remember any pertinent information. I still have to go back and like, we'll just have to come back to it because I don't have enough information. And this is where we're ending today's transmission. I said this is where this is the episode where things start kicking off. But in editing, it was like it'll be too long if I leave it here. So let me just push it to the next episode and blah, 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 blah. But I mean, some cool stuff did happen, so to speak. And I'm also starting a new series. So if all goes well and I can get the thumbnails done in a reasonable time, there might be a double upload today. If not, you never heard me say that. <laughs> what double upload? <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!